This is May 07, Physics 5, A22, and it's question four. And it starts with a cathode ray oscilloscope, or CRO, can be used to measure the voltage and period of a waveform. The amplifier connected to the Y plates of the a particular CRO has a sensitivity of 200 millivolts per centimeter. Figure 4.1 shows the position of the spot, and there it is there, when a DC potential of 0.4 volts is applied to the Y amplifier. Each square on the graticule is one centimeter, or each square on the screen is one centimeter. So each of these is one centimeter. On figure 4.1, mark the new position of the spot when the DC potential is not volts. Label this position A. So the position you can see at the minute is a position of 0.4 volts. And we know each square, or each one centimeter, is 200 millivolts, which is the same as 0.2 volts. And therefore, if that's already at a position of 0.4, then if you count down minus 0.2, minus 0.2, therefore that's going to give you the position of it at naught volts. And we'll mark it in green and call it A. On figure 4.1 then, mark the position of the spot when the DC potential is minus 0.8, label this position B. And so if it's minus 0.8, that means you have to go down another four squares beneath that. So there's one, two, three, four, and it's down here. And we're labelling it position B. The linear time base on a CRO is used to show the variation of the input signal with time. Explain how this is achieved. So you have a voltage across a set of horizontal plates and they're called the X plates. This moves the spot across the screen. At a steady speed. Part C. Just scan out a wee bit. Figure 4.2 shows the trace produced by an AC signal applied to the Y amplifier. The Y sensitivity is set at 5 millivolts per centimetre and the time base is set at 50 microseconds per centimetre. Each square is 1 centimetre. By taking measurements from the trace, calculate the maximum voltage generated. So you can see that each square here is a centimetre. We are looking for the maximum voltage generated, so we're looking at the amplitude of the signal. So the amplitude of the signal is three squares, and each square is equal to the Y sensitivity, is set at five millivolts per centimeter. And therefore the answer there is 15 millivolts. And we're given our answer, we're given our answer in millivolts, so we're gonna write 15 there. The next part we have to find is the frequency of the signal. So we need to find, work out the time period of the wave. So we can tell right across that screen we've got one, two and a half. So we know that two and a half time periods is equal to, and you've got two, four, six, eight, ten squares. And each square is worth, you're told in the question, 50 microseconds. And therefore we can work out the time period of one wave. So that's 500 microseconds divided by 2.5. And that gives you an answer of 200 microseconds. And then to find frequency, you have to do one over the time period. And so it's 1 over 200 by 10 to the minus 6 because it's in microseconds, and that gives you an answer of 5,000 hertz. <coughs> Last part of the question, I'll just scan in a wee bit. Calculate the time-based setting needed to show only one complete waveform over the complete screen. So we want that one wave to be worth 10 squares. 
and we know that the time period of those 10 squares is 200 microseconds. So we want 10 squares to be equal to 200 microseconds. So therefore one square must be equal to 200 over 10 and that gives you 20 and it's in microseconds per centimetre.